job actions. Now this is what we've all been waiting for. This love letter has given us a plethora of information regarding the new job abilities and spells, but before we begin to go over all of the new job actions, let's talk about a few other things first that were mentioned in this live letter. So as we all know, Ishgard is divided up into two sections, the upper nobility and the lower slums. I won't go into much about Ishgard as we already know quite a lot about it already, but a large majority of the quests will be in the slums and maybe even some of the new job trainers. The market board and the retainer in Ishgard however are situated in the second floor with the upper nobility. And this market board is of course linked with all the other markets in Eorzea. We also get some more flying mount information. So you will be able to pick up your first flying mount very early in Heaven's Ward. However, you will not be able to fly all over the map instantly. There's a new mechanic called a Ferric Currents. All over the world, the sky is filled with currents which restrict your flight path. The only way to fly into these strong currents are by collecting what's known as a Ferric Currents which can be obtained via quests, but also through actually discovering the new areas and locations. You will need to explore different areas in the maps on foot first, before you can start to fly over the area. The Dravania foreground is the next zone that they decided to show us, and you can actually encounter wild, dangerous chocobos in this zone. Monsters in Heavensward are also much stronger than what we've previously dealt with before in the Realm Reborn, adding to the increased difficulty all around. If you're going to go at it solo with two high level monsters, you may need to actually run otherwise you will die, which actually sounds kind of interesting. Beastmen tribes are also very deadly areas now, so you may need a few of your friends to also help you out. Next up is the Ravana Primal Battle, and shockingly, the first thing that came into my head was Titan, with the high platform in the middle of nowhere, and I will not be surprised if the fence around the arena falls off and you could potentially get knocked off. On these images you can also check out the new Dark Knight, Astrologian and the Machinist job icons in the party UI. Which what also strikes my eye is that the Dark Knight has a comparable HP pool to the Warrior. This particular encounter does look like the story mode or the normal mode Ravana boss battle as everyone has been level synced down and Yoshi P also has much lower HP than before. And now let's go over all of the job changes individually. Of course not every job action will be covered as they never talk about every single job action in the live letter but this should give you guys some insight and a taster session on what to expect for the new jobs in Heaven's Ward. First, tanks. The Paladin will receive new abilities which stem off from both Savage Blade and Riot Blade, so you won't just be using Rage of Halone spamming continuously over and over again. So you'll first be using Rage of Halone to gain enmity, then you'll be using your various other combos to land your dots. It also means that as an off tank you'll be able to deal significantly more damage and manage your dots for far greater DPS experience. One new skill that the Paladin is getting is Divine Veil. Divine Veil sets a barrier around the user and if cures or heals are cast on the Paladin whilst under the effect of Divine Veil, nearby party members will also receive a similar barrier buff. They will also receive other abilities which will allow you to block incoming attacks more frequently, which should also allow you to utilize Shield Swipe more often. The Warrior will be receiving a new stance which opposes Defiance, which is called Deliverance. Deliverance is the stance which will increase your overall DPS whilst acting as the off tank. Similar to Wrath, whilst under Deliverance, you will be receiving stacks of Abandon which can stack up to 5 times, and you will receive new skills which do consume up your Abandon stacks. You will be able to keep all your stacks while switching in between both Defiance and Deliverance stances, allowing for easier interaction between being a main tank and an off tank during raids. Raw Intuition is also a new skill which the Warrior is getting, which guarantees a parry while standing in front of your target. However, if you are attacked from other angles whilst you have Raw Intuition up, you'll receive critical damage, so it's a very high risk, high reward skill. The Dark Knight received a stance called Dark Side, 
similar to Sword Oath, it's an attack based stance. You'll have an aura which comes and surrounds you, but gradually depletes your MP. You will be unable to receive MP support from your allies, such as Mage's Ballad, but you do have skills which can restore up and regenerate your MP. Grit is the tanking stance for the Dark Knight. Essentially, it helps you gain enmity, and they never really mentioned what else Grit can do. Similar to Homegang, the Dark Knight is getting a skill called Living Dead, which is an all-out blocking action. Unlike the other jobs where you use a ranged skill such as Tomahawk or Shield Lob to grab enemies, the Dark Knight instead has an ability which allows him to leap to his target. Some other abilities that are named are Dark Dance, Dark Passenger, Dark Arts, and Soul Eater, the traditional Dark Knight ability. Monks are receiving a new stack, known as Chakra, which can be stacked up to 5 times. When you have 5 stacks with Chakra, you can execute very high damaging skills, or you can consume your stacks of Chakra to restore TP. There's also a new action which allows you to change your form on the go, and another which consumes your greased lightning stacks for very high potency damaging ability. This ability would be best used just before a boss becomes invulnerable, phase changes or other areas in battle where you will most probably end up losing your stacks, so you won't really be affected that much by losing your Grease Lightning. The Dragoon receives a new buff known as the Blood of the Dragon, whilst under the effect of Blood of the Dragon, progressive use of Chaos Thrusts and Full thrusts will generate procs for other forward stage combos which can be used. Additionally, we're going to receive a powerful skill or skills which consumes up the remaining duration of Blood of the Dragon. We're also going to be receiving our 100th million adjustment to our jumps, which is no surprise really. The ninjas aren't receiving any drastic changes, but mainly quality of life fixes. One concern is how Hutan takes up a majority of your ninjutsu casts, so there will be new weapon skills in the rotation which will allow you to maintain your Hutan buff even longer, so your ninjutsus are now freed up for other damaging abilities instead. Also, a few new positional skills have been added to the ninja, and an ability like Goad has also been included, which allows you to decrease the amount of enemy generated by a targeted player. The Bard receives a new action known as the Wanderer's Minuet. This song can be used whilst playing other songs, which makes it rather unique. It gives you a unique stance where you can start charging up and channeling your abilities to deal additional damage. However, movement is restricted whilst charging up your abilities and you will not be able to do auto attacks. It sounds like whilst you're under the effect of Wanderer's Minuet, you want to charge your abilities in between your auto attacks to ensure you're receiving a damage boost and still auto attacking without a deficit in your overall DPS. Of course, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Sidewinder is a new physical attack which will increase the effect or the potency of your dots which have already been applied to your enemies. The Machinist has 5 stacks of ammunition. You will automatically reload your gun when you've used up all of your 5 bullets, but you can also manually reload when you're not out of ammunition to increase your damage efficiency. There's also a new action called Quick Reload, where you can instantly reload one bullet which allows you to manage your usable ammunition. There are also weapon skill combos unlike the standard jobs such as the Dragoon and the Ninja. So supposing you're now having your gun and you can start shooting bullets, shot 1 will give you a 50% chance to boost the damage of shot 2, and then an additional 50% chance to boost the damage of shot 3, and so on and so forth. So you can utilize your reload and quick reload function to continuously loot bullets and deal more and more damage. The summoner is receiving many changes. Firstly, the original Tri Disaster will now be renamed to Tri Bind. In exchange, we'll be receiving a brand new Tri Disaster which we will be able to unlock in Heaven's Ward, which applies all three of your summoner dots at once, so Bio, Miasma and Bio 2, simultaneously. Also, the summoner will not be receiving new Eggies, instead, will be receiving what's known as the Dreadworm Trance, which possesses you with the power of Bahamut himself. 
whilst under the Dreadworm chants, you'll receive stacks of Bahamut Ether, which you can then use to spend on additional actions, and then to eventually use Ak Morn. And I'm seriously not joking, you can Ak Morn as a summoner. That's so cool. Black Mage has three very new and interesting abilities, and Yoshi P actually went very in depth with the Black Mage changes. The first is Fade Lines. Fade Lines is a stationary AoE buff which you place on the ground. When the caster stands within this buff, they will receive a 15% haste bonus. Once you leave this area, the marker will disappear, so you will need to watch your movement placement for AoE mechanics. Next is Sharp Cast. Sharp Cast is an instant 15 second duration buff which guarantees you a proc when using your next ability, such as Fire or Thunder. Sharp Cast disappears once you cast either a Fire or a Thunder spell which generates you procs. The finale is Enochian. Enochian is a 30 second buff which grants you the ability to use Fire and Blizzard 4, but you will need to be in either Astral Fire or Umbral Eyes to use your respective elemental skill. Also, Fire and Blizzard 4 do not generate any Astral or Umbral stacks, so you will need to plan out carefully how your rotation goes. One interesting part about Enochian is the interaction it has with Blizzard 4. Each cast of Blizzard 4 will renew the duration of Enochian, but 5 seconds from the overall buff will be removed. In other words, the Black Mage's rotation will be juggled between keeping Astral Fire up, replenishing your MP, and keeping up Enochian for as long as possible to continue casting Fire 4 using Blizzard 4 as your Enochian refresh. This at least is how I perceive the job to play out. The White Mage is traditionally a pure healing job, so they've introduced new additional abilities which they previously lacked. The first is Asylum, which generates an AoE healing field. Another skill is Assize, which can be used to attack and heal at the same time. Additionally, White Mages will receive another instant cast heal similar to Benediction, but with a lowered healing effect. The White Mage is also going to be receiving Stone and Arrow Free, and will also introduce new magic based dot spells. The Scholar has received a few cool actions which will require you to think when it is best to utilize them. The first is Indomitability, which is a new AoE heal to supplement the Scholar's current AoE healing mechanics. Deployment Tactics is another action which extends the effect or duration of Adlocium and Eye for an Eye. Emergency Tactics is another which will change the barrier effect of Adlocium to an additional healing power for the effect of the barrier. The last action that they showed us was Dissipation, which allows you to dismiss your fairy in exchange for additional healing power. And lastly, the Astrologian. There are two basic stances for the Astrologian, Duronal Sect and Nocturnal Sect. One of them is a pure healing stance, much like the White Mage, and the Aria is a pure barrier stance, like the Scholar. Depending on which stance you're in, the additional effects of your heals will dramatically change. On top of this, we already have the Divining Card Drawing mechanic, which adds buffs to you and your allies. Depending on your randomly drawn card, you will gain effects such as increased attack power, haste, and damage reduction. Now, the official translation on the forums and the live letters switched around the naming conventions for the abilities, but for reference, I'll be using the translations used in the live letters, not the one on the official forums. So, there's an ability called Shuffle. If you do not like the card that you drew, you can shuffle it back into your deck and draw out another random card. The shuffle action will increase the effect of the next card that you draw. And the second is called Royal Road, where if you drew a really good card that you liked, but you don't want to use it right now, you can keep it on hold on the side to use it later on, and then be able to draw another card. So that's all of the new information in this live letter, unfortunately. If you enjoyed this live letter video, please give it a thumbs up 